Hello everyone, I'm Taylor Bampico. Today's video is going to be 10 facts about my erotic thriller, Silent Rage. As I said in my video, 10 facts about traffic, I want to talk about my books a little bit more, so I figured why not go to Silent Rage and who knows, probably going to do Parabellum next. With that being said, let's get started. Number 10, Jedrick Holcomb is my oldest character. While I began writing Silent Rage in 2007, initial character concepts date as far back as 1997. Obviously, the character has gone through numerous changes since then, especially since the initial publication in 2016 and its republication in 2018. Of course, I had to start with talking about Jedrick Holcomb. Now let's move on to Lily Barrett. Fact number nine, Lily Barrett's name. Her first name derives from Mara Wilson's character from Thomas and the Magic Railroad, Lily Stone. I was eight years old, I liked the name, it just stuck in my head. However, I did add a second L for balance. And obviously her last name derives from the Barrett M107 rifle. Number eight, the number of semi-trucks. Initially, Jedrick only kept one throughout the entire novel. However, that changed drastically. In the start of the book, he owns a 1977 Kenworth W900A. In fact, you've seen a painting similar to the one that appears in that book, it used to be behind me. It's actually in my Perfect Blue review video. Very similar to that one. Originally he sold that one when he comes into possession of a 1976 White Western Star 4800, which is similar to the one pictured behind me. Later on that was changed where he keeps both of those trucks and he also buys a 1984 Peterbilt 359. And then later on he acquires a 1988 Max Superliner RW713. And then of course later on he acquires a 1994 Peterbilt 379. Now five trucks is definitely more than one man who doesn't own a company would ever need. But the reason behind he has all these trucks is explained in volume one and will again be explained in volume two of Silent Rage. Fact number seven, the location which is actually used throughout the book was the last place I decided on. Usually that's how it works, it's always the last place you think of, but I really had no idea where Silent Rage was actually going to take place. I considered Southern California, but decided to use that for another story. I thought about Colorado, but then I decided, let's have that be where Lily Barrett used to live. The reason I decided to have Silent Rage set in the state of Illinois is simply because of Kenichi Sonoda's Gunsmith Cats. Which is ironic because both Mr. Sonoda's work and my work take place in a state which has extreme restrictions on firearms. For a story, that's kind of fun to do. Ish. Number six, the trucks actually determined what era these books would be set in. Semi-trucks from the 1970s and 80s would blend in a lot better in the 1990s than, let's say, the mid-2000s or even the 2010s. Though I have seen Peterborough 359s here and there, Kenworth w 100 especially the A models, not as much. Of course, depends on where you're at in the country. I have yet to see, in person, a white Western Star 4800 in the United States. Though I have seen some online, I haven't seen them drive around locally. At least where I'm at anyway. Someone somewhere in this country has probably seen one in person, I just haven't yet. Number five, Chuck Norris was no inspiration. While the title does refer to an interesting trait regarding the protagonist of my novel, the 1982 film starring the famous martial artist was no inspiration whatsoever. After watching the movie, I can confirm my book is nothing like that film at all. It is entertaining, and if you have the opportunity, go ahead and watch it, because why not? It's Chuck Norris. Number four, some movies and TV shows were an inspiration for this book. The most obvious, of course, is Stephen King's movie, Maximum Overdrive, which I do reference in the book. It's my favorite movie. I mean, I'm even wearing the shirt for this video. X-Files was a bit of an influence because of government involvement, shadowy agents, and conspiracies. One episode which really made me think about that was EBE. That was also the episode with the first appearance of the lone gunman. Those guys were funny. On to number three. Silent Rage is an erotic thriller, not a love story. There are many novels featuring content which appears in this book. Of course, the most widely known, albeit inaccurate, would be Fifty Shades of Grey. I read that book, and as I've said before, it taught me everything not to do when it comes to erotic writing. E.L. James, the author of Fifty Shades of Grey, did state that her book really was a love story. Mine is not one. In fact, the word love does not appear once throughout the entire story. That's kind of a difference between romance and erotic material. Romances have to be what's known as H.E.A., happily ever after. Erotic novels don't need that. At least from what I've found, that's one of the main differences between the two genres. Anyway, on to fact number two. Colors are symbolic. I implemented a trait from the 1960 film Psycho directed by Alfred Hitchcock. A scene with Janet Lee in the film's beginning, which was considered risque at the time, of her in white lingerie and then later black lingerie, shows her transformation from good to evil. 
I recreate this in two scenes throughout the novel. One being the first sexual encounter between Jedrick and Lily, where she is in a white bra and pair of bikini panties, which represents innocence and purity. The second scene was later in the novel, where she is now wearing a black bra and matching thong. This represents how she has experienced things and been exposed to a far more drastic version of the world. In a way, losing her innocence since the scene I previously mentioned. Back in high school, I was in a class called Literature in the Film, and the teacher actually pointed that particular instance out while we were watching four of Hitchcock's films. That trait stuck with me, and since then, I've implemented the use of colors throughout all of my work. On to the final fact. The sequel came first. Of the numerous work in progress I've had, Silent Rage Volume 2 is among them. However, for some reason, 14 years ago, I started out with Volume 2 long before Volume 1 even existed. Don't know why, just happened that way. While it was an absolute mess, I guarantee elements of Volume 2 will probably appear in the new Volume 2, and probably some other WIPs I'm working on as well. Well anyway, that was 10 facts about my erotic thriller Silent Rage. Well as always, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, consider subscribing if you haven't already. Click that bell icon so you're notified when I upload new content. Leave any comments you have in the section below and have a good day. See ya!